There is an amazing verse in the Quran where God says, Do not be like those who forgot God and God made them forget themselves. Now, one thing we can take from this, one point of reflection, is that those that turn away from the Creator and deny Him, by extension, deny the purpose of the existence. And therefore, they don't know who they are anymore, or why they are. Right? And this, this can be understood from many different perspectives. And one perspective I touched upon in a video I put out, um, I, I believe about a week and a half ago, where I went into the logical implications of atheism and by ext or the logical implications of naturalism and by extension atheism. And what I did was I highlighted that if you adopt these worldviews, then you lose the ability to account for, make sense of objective, you know, not objective, but ultimate purpose, meaning, meaningful happiness, value. And it's a brilliant chapter that's covered in the Divine Reality. I really recommend you guys pick it up and, and read it for yourselves. And I, I'll link my, my video in the description box below as well so you guys can go and, and, and watch that. But unfortunately, I think many people, it really upset many people because I was just calling a spade a spade and it really you know ruffled some feathers as well. And obviously most people attack me and ad hominem attacks X, Y, and Z, which, which, which I'm not really concerned about. But what I was more worried about was that there are people out there that are probably you know left a bit confused so i wanted to make another video to clarify certain things i spoke about what i said was that you can't have your cake and eat it you can't on one hand claim to be a naturalist and on the other hand claim to have you know purpose and and and, and meaningful happiness and and value and x y and z because it just these are contradictory things if you really think about them and logically follow through take value for example right and i think it'll make Better sense if I give you a bit more of a background and repeat what I said in the last video, which is that, look, if you adopt naturalism, by extension atheism, what that means is you deny God. And therefore, what you claim is that everything can be explained by a physical process. Everything in existence is a result of cold, random, blind, physical stuff. That's pretty much it, right? And therefore, there is no, there is no creator. There's no intentionality behind this all. It's just an accident. Everything is an accident. I'm an accident, you're an accident, and therefore everything about us is an accident. Therefore, what does it mean to value something? Or what does it mean to say that human beings are more valuable than, for example, a chocolate rabbit, a chocolate bunny, or a pencil sharpener? Nothing really if you follow through. The pencil sharpener is a rearrangement of molecules and physical stuff. I am a rearrangement of molecules and physical stuff. Full stop. That's it. And that's crazy if you think about it, because when it comes to life and real life, what really matters is how we feel and what we know. Put the whole rational jargon aside and X, Y, and Z. When you see an innocent child by being beaten on the street to death, you will scream out, even as an atheist or a naturalist, this is wrong, stop, and you will feel this in every atom of your body. But say the, the, the guy that's doing this, the, committing this nasty crime turns around and asks you, well, why is it wrong? You're just going to be left in a position saying, well, it's wrong because it's wrong, right? or some other patch philosophy that you may be using, right? And I'll, do, I'll, I'll explain what I mean by patch philosophy in a second. But the point being, it strips you from being able to account for the way you feel and what you know as a human being, whether that be objective morals or whether that be even value, right? Va the value we give to certain things. Now, I know some people may use certain ideas such as humanism, secular humanism, I'm a naturalist and a humanist, X, Y, and Z. But again, these are just terms. When you look at humanism, it's based on principles again. And again, take the idea of human life being precious or valuable. Where do you get this principle from? What does this even mean in the grand scheme of things? It's just, a, it's, I can say, well, no, non-animate, you know, non-living things are more valuable. Why is that statement any less than human life is valuable on naturalism or atheism, right? So you, you're left in a very, and this is what I meant by a bleak, cold, dark place, right? Because you know as a human being certain things are valuable. There is ultimate purpose. There is meaning. There are objective morals, right and wrong. However, you cannot now account for these on atheism or naturalism. That was my point. You cannot have your cake and eat it. That's not saying you can't keep living in a way where you still have this cognitive dissonance and, and you understand that there's a problem between these two ideas, but you carry on living. You can do this. But I would, I would, I would say that people that are sincerely looking and are honest, and I've realized this, that there's things, that's things, there's things that don't add up. You know, There's ways I feel and things I know which can't be justified or accounted for under naturalism or atheism, a worldview or maybe currently holding on to. And those people... I just encourage them to be open that maybe there is another way of life which is correct. Because for me personally, and I'll conclude on this, for me this is a sign, 
right? This For me, this is a clear sign because I believe God created us. He made us rational. He gave us rational faculties so that we can reason and we can, you know, we can engage with and, and grapple with these ideas and things and understand that there are contradictions just so that these could be tools which lead us to Him. Because we will see there's a contradiction. Okay, this worldview doesn't make sense. Maybe I need to drop it and keep looking. And eventually, these faculties are there to lead us to our ultimate objective, which is to worship our Creator, which is to know our Creator, you know, to come to terms with the existence of our Creator, right? And obviously, the, the essence of that is already within our nature, but that's another discussion. Um, so, yeah, I believe these are signs. And I believe that the honest person who's sincerely seeking and searching should keep an open mind and pick up on these things and, and realize, okay, things aren't adding up here. I need to probably keep looking. And that's simply my point, right? And one place I would encourage you to look is the Qur'an because I, for one, believe, as do many, many other people, that when you honestly and sincerely approach the Qur'an, you study it and you read it, you will see the truth there. And you will see things in there which which, which are totally different to what you hear from, from, from popular atheists and from other people, you know, out there. And, you know, at the end of the day, every single one of us is living our own lives. Every single one of us is going to die. So it's upon every single one of us to use these faculties and abilities and what I call blessings that we've been given to their maximum and to try to try and find the truth. So I leave you guys with that. Till next time, take care.